Hey, welcome. I am A Train Bets, and this is my channel. And today we're going to do a video on the basics of sports betting. This is going to end up being a series of a bunch of videos on the basics of sports betting. But today we're going to focus on learning the key terms of what sports betting is. Now, this is particularly geared for those folks that have maybe been watching sports for their whole lives and are interested, have heard that sports betting is now legal in their area. They can go online or get an app and start doing some sports betting themselves. That's exactly what we want to help them do. And this is before, like we do a lot in this channel, very advantage play, positive EV stuff. I do a bunch of work with Odds Jam. Don't worry about any of that right now. What you want to do is just understand what are the basics? What are the very basics of sports book lingo, sports betting lingo, and the kinds of information that you're going to be working with just to understand how these sports betting markets work and, and words work. So we're going to start here with the key terms. And there is no bigger key term than bet. We're going to start with bet. And I'm going to bring up my camera so you can see me while I talk about this stuff. Uh, what is a bet, right? And and what we'll have here is the the, the word and then some cinnamon, synonyms and some uh, other related terms that are kind of all grouped together. But basically a bet or a wager, or you might hear a ticket or that you have action. Uh, but basically what this means is that you've said, I am going to put forth a certain amount of money to be able to win some amount of money if a particular sporting event occurs in in the way I think it will. So I might think that you know the Cubs are going to win today. I could put a bet on the Cubs winning. So I'm putting a, a certain amount of money down by putting it down. What I mean is I put it I give it to a sports book and if the Cubs win, they're going to give me some amount of money back. It gets more complicated from here, but that's what a bet is. We're just going to say I bet just like you use it in normal common vernacular. I bet this is going to happen. This is what we do. So we're going to provide an opportunity to make some money or lose some money if that event doesn't occur that way. And there's a whole world of complexity behind that. But that's the very basic, right? So we're going to start. We're, this is where we're starting. You can make a bet. You make a bet at a sports book. Now, a sports book can be part of a casino. So certainly, if you are finding this video, you may have seen a sports book at some point in your life, or you've seen certainly advertisements on TVs. There are online sports books, app-based sports books. There's offshore sports books. But what these are, these are organizations, companies that will take your bet and then pay you out according to the rules and the stipulations of that bet. So that sports book is where you book your bet. That's where that comes from. You book this wager and then they will then give you um, the amount back when that happens. So you have to cash in your ticket to get that money back if you, that event happens the way you predict it will. Okay. So going from there, bankroll. So this is where you think about bankroll as the amount of money that you have available with which to bet at sports books, right? So this could be, this is also a common, common gambling vernacular of the bankroll is your gambling budget or your gambling kind of piggy bank, if you will. Uh, stake can also be how much money you're bringing to, it's it, often in poker, bringing to the table to be able to uh, have an, an action, use on betting, work with a sports book. So bankroll is how much money you have available for the purposes of sports betting. Favorite. This is when there is one team that is more likely to win than the other team or player, or event. It's the more likely to occur outcome. And this becomes important to understand because when you watch my videos or watch anyone's videos uh, or read about it, you're going to hear favorites all over the place. This is the most likely. If, you, if you're talking about a horse race, this is the most likely horses to come in, the favorite or the favorites, the more likely events to occur. Okay. By comparison, we have underdogs. Underdogs are the less likely option to occur. And so when we talk about sports betting, we'll talk about bets where there's the, the favorite bet, the underdog bet, and then we'll talk about coin flips. So a coin flip is basically when there is no underdog or favorite, it is a toss-up. It is a 50-50 wager. Nobody um, 
can say for sure which one is more likely to win. There, now, there probably is one that's more likely to win in reality, but the odds don't reflect it. So the odds, what we'll learn about on this side, the odds are the mathematical price or the mathematical based price that you're going to actually pay to work with uh, that wager. So if we think about a coin flip would be a 50-50 outcome, a 50-50 likelihood of a particular outcome. The odds might be minus 110 and minus 110. What that means, and we'll, we'll, we'll have more advanced like actually placing bets and talking through some of the details on it, but what you'll see a lot of the time, and this is something that just seems different about sports betting, so it's worth spending a moment on. When you see a minus 110, on a line. A line is a listed price. I don't think I have that on a slide, but a line is a listed price of which you can bet. Minus 110 means for, now a lot of people will say $110. Like, don't bet $110 if you just start out. Bet $11. Bet $11 to win $10. Everything becomes an increment of 100 So minus 110 really means you need minus 100 or 110% to get back 100%. So it's it's that's kind of where it's coming from. $11. If you bet $11 and win, the sports book will give back to you the $11 that you bet along with $10. It's the amount to win 10 or 100, whatever that uh, amount is that you choose to bet. And so you can bet any amount, but that's where the math comes from. So the minus 110 or minus 120 would be $12 to win 100 or <laughs> that would be great. No, $12 to win $10 or $120 to win $100. And so that's where odds and you'll hear different things like American odds, European odds, uh, the odds jam site. If you go to atrainbetsoddsjam.com, the odds jam site has a ton of information about the next layer of detail behind the odds. But the odds are effectively the prices that you'll see at a sports book. I'm trying to keep this very simple so that by watching this video, you get some familiarity, but you don't necessarily know all the details yet. We're just trying to introduce some of these terms that you've probably heard already, but you don't necessarily know what they mean and maybe are not finding a good place to ask that. So we're, that's what odds are. Plenty of additional research uh, available to, to go into more. Here's a term that you're gonna hear that is not obvious a lot of the time. Fade means to go against or to not um, not agree with a lot of the time. So if I say, uh, you know, I you know, if I say the the White Sox are likely to win today, you might say, oh, I'm going to fade that bet. I'm going to fade that action. And what that means is that you are saying, I don't think that that's correct. I will take the other side of that. So fade means go to the opposite side. Whereas tail means I'm, it's, it's kind of just think of like, I'm riding on your coattails. I am going to follow you on this bet. This is something that will happen a lot, especially in the odds jam community, especially with like the streaming videos I do every day. The tail is where I'm placing a bet on something and you're like, oh, I like that idea. I'm going to do that too. And so you just use the research and use the bet that I came up with to do that. Now we'll see a little bit of a uh, downside to some of that a, a little bit later. But for the basics, if somebody says fade, you're going against. Somebody says tail, you're going with them. Okay. That is common terminology. Main markets. Okay. This is where we have the core of the betting happening. You're gonna, we're going to cover some of these terms like spread and total. Those are what are considered main markets. And that is where the price is set up so that it is, um, what what the sports books feel are the most likely events to occur. So you have main markets and then you have a, a related term called alternative markets or, or alternate markets. And that's where if I have one bet at a certain price or a certain outcome, and, and we'll talk about this uh, in a moment around spreads or totals, 
but it's basically saying we can shift where that neutral ground is, where you know the main markets is where like 50% of the action, 50% of the bets are going to come in on either side. So, you know, some people are going to pick one outcome. The other people are going to pick the opposing outcome. And together, that's going to be kind of where that main market line is. Alternates kind of move that, but change the prices. And so by changing those prices, you'll end up with alternate markets or different events at different prices on, on different things occurring. So we'll talk about that a little bit more in the totals and the spreads. Next up, we have props. So as opposed to main markets, if you hear props, these are bets that are a little bit less about the game outcome or the core outcomes. And they're a little bit more like, you know, everybody's here the Super Bowl is when you have all of this, all of these crazy bets all happening, a lot of those are, are what are called prop bets or, or propositions. And then you'll have player props, you'll have game props. Those obviously mean bets on certain players' activity. So in baseball, you might have how many strikeouts is a pitcher going to get? That's a player prop for a pitcher. You might have how many total bases will a runner get or a, a batter get? That is a... um. A player prop for batters, you know, and similar points in a basketball game or whatever, touchdowns in a football game. Uh, game props are other things that are tied to team, like individual team scoring or individual inning bets in a baseball game or quarterly bets. Like those are where you kind of have different outcomes that happen within specific times or specific things. Like, will, um, the goalie, uh, or the collective goalies block, um, you know, 25 shots or 50 shots or whatever it is in a hockey match, uh, a hockey game, for example. So those are the kinds of things where they're not tied to the core thing that you're going to see on the scoreboard, but they're tied to other events happening. So those are props. And that's why the Super Bowl has so many things, because there's so many people interested in trying to get as much action, put as many wagers and bets in as possible on that very exciting event. So next, we're going to get to how sports books work. So VIG is a term that covers where the sports book by setting prices in such a way where if you pick one side, so we'll go back to our simple example with odds, where if you have odds of minus 110 on either side, so let's say the uh, sports book is offering, if you think the Cubs are going to win today, you can bet it at minus 110. If you think the Cubs are going to lose today, you can bet it at minus 110. Well, in that case, Either side you choose, you're going to pay 11 and if you win, you're going to get $10 back. That means that somebody, so whoever's bet the wrong side will have lost $11. But if the sports book has gotten equal amounts of, of betters on both sides, they're going to collect $11 from everybody. And then for the half that wins, they're going to give $10 of the 11 back plus their original uh, uh, um, wager. And so that means all of those elect, uh, extra uh, $1 that they got from the people who lost, that's what they get to keep. That's how the sports books makes money. So when you see a, a, a spread like that, where you see minus 110, minus 110, you know, if you're betting with your friend on a particular event, that's 50, 50 likelihood to occur. That's a coin flip. Then you would have a, a line of, of a hundred and a hundred, which means you're going to bet me $5, and if you win, I'll give you the $5. If you lose, I get the $5. And that's where, in a sports book, you won't see that very often, unless it's some sort of crazy promotion, because the sports book has to make money. They make money on the difference between what they're paying the winners versus what they're collecting from the losers. Okay? So that's VIG, House Advantage, Juice. All of those terms refer to that differential in price that allows the sports book to make money in the long run. Okay. Next, we're going to talk about different outcomes. So the a draw is an outcome in which nobody wins. So we, we didn't cover win and lose because, I mean, that's obvious. Uh, you either win the bet, you lose the bet, but you can draw. And so a draw can be, it can also be called a canceled bet. Uh, because what it means is that it ended in exactly the middle ground of, of what your particular wager was all about. So if you say bet a total of over eight runs in a baseball game and there were exactly eight runs in a baseball game, then you'll that'll be a draw. Then the ticket will get refunded. You won't win or lose, but that ticket will get refunded. And so a draw basically means it just cancels out and it's as if you didn't place the wager at all. 
So let's talk about some of the wager types that you're going to have. The, one of the most common is a spread bet. What a spread bet does is allows you to, um, and this is also called the line, uh, kind of colloquially as well, but a spread bet allows you to have a differential in the score to get to a point where the prices can be relatively equal on either side. So in a typical uh, football game, uh, we'll see a spread of, say, minus three. So say the Chicago Bears are playing the Dallas Cowboys, and the Dallas Cowboys are favored by three. That spread, so it'll be Dallas Cowboys minus three versus the Bears plus three, and both bets could be at an odds of minus 110. So that odds of minus 110, you can bet either side, but Dallas would have to win by more than three for you to win that bet, or the Bears would have to lose by less than three to win that bet. If it ties and there's exactly three-point differential and Dallas wins the game by exactly three points, then it's a draw, which we just talked about. So the spread is by shifting the score a little bit, you can get to a wager where you can price it equally on both sides. And the outcomes, because of that, you can assume the outcomes are relatively the same on either side. So we think there's a 50-50 chance is what a sports book is saying. If they go minus 110 and minus 110 on either side of a spread bet, if they do that, then they're saying we think there's a 50-50 chance of that outcome occurring on either side. And that's really where that main market comes from. Okay. Next, we're going to talk about the total. Similar to the spread, but a little bit different in the way it's calculated. So instead of two teams, and this can work with with individual people or games or or what have you as well. Like so it's spreads and totals can be applied. And we'll do videos on each of the different sports because there's a lot of detail there. But at, at the highest level, a spread is is kind of the differential in score. The total is the com combination of the score. And so you hear that sometimes as an over under. That's how you bet a total. You could say a, a total of 48 points in a football game. And I think that there's not going to be much scoring because the weather is bad. I'm going to take under on that total and, you know, pay, you know, minus 110 odds. So I'll pay my $11 to try to win $10 if the football game goes under 48 points. And so that's how you would bet a total. That's kind of what a total would look like. Similar mechanics of how the odds factor in, but it's based on the collective score of that particular game. A money line is taking, and it's actually, this is the simplest of the three bet types because a money line is saying, okay, well, we're not worried about the spread on the difference in these two games. We just want to bet, hey, the Cubs are going to win. So the Cubs are going to win today, which is probably going to be a underdog type situation given uh, how the Cubs are. The Cubs are going to be plus 140 to win against their opponent. So say they're playing the Milwaukee Brewers and the Cubs are plus 140 for the match against the Brewers. Now, what you could also say is I want to take the Brewers and the Brewers could be minus 180. So Cubs plus 140, Brewers minus 180. And you say, well, I think the Brewers are going to win today. Now you have to pay $18 to get back $10. And so that's how the odds are factoring in. You're, you're going to pay a premium for this, what is effectively a line that's shifted to where it's plus or minus zero points. So money line is kind of a spread with just no plus or minus points. The Cubs, on the other hand, if you're saying, okay, Cubs, I think are going to win. I'm going to get a higher price payout of if the Cubs win. Now I'm going to get $14 for my $10 if it's plus 140. And so that's how the odds connect into the money line. So you can move either side of this. You can move the prices based on an outcome, or you can move the outcome based on the prices. And so that's how sports books create all these markets. So markets would be just different kinds of places you can bet, different kinds of bets you can make. And these markets are how the sports book offers opportunities for whatever you imagine. You know, all, all this stuff is, is computer generated on the back end. So there's not a person there with a green visor saying, okay, this is what we're going to do for all of these bets. It's all algorithm generated, but they are now able to do so many different things that they are allowing you to kind of use your imagination, whatever you want to do. Now, when we do advantage betting, 
will learn that, hey, all of this very uh, variety and different kinds of bets leads to opportunities where we may be able to take advantage of it. Don't worry about how we're going to take advantage of it. Yeah, just learn what it is first. And so that's where uh, Moneyline comes in. Now, let's go back to spread betting because there's a couple more terms that we want to cover. Laying points. Laying points is another way to say I'm betting a spread bet on the favorite. So we've covered all these terms, right? I want to bet that the you know Dallas Cowboys are going to beat the Chicago Bears by three points. I'm going to lay three points on the favorite, the Dallas Cowboys, to beat the Bears, and I'll pay my minus 110 odds, which are $11 to win 10, that that event occurs. Okay, So laying points is when I am betting on the favorite on a spread bet, and that I have to have some amount of points above just winning to win my bet. The opposite of that is taking the points. So when you are betting on an underdog and you are saying, hey, I want to bet the underdog to be the winner plus three, I'm going to take those points, betting on the Bears against the Dallas Cowboys, saying, I think the Bears are going to only lose by two. If I'm getting plus three, I'm going to take those points and we'll have action on that particular sporting event. So that's how lay points and take points um, are factored in. A straight bet. Now, this is where we're going to get into not what the bets are themselves, but this is the mechanics of the bets that we are making, because there's a few different kinds of ways that we make bets and combine bets, which is what we're going to talk about in a moment. But when we make a straightforward single bet on one outcome, like I've been talking about this entire video, that one outcome bet is a straight bet. One event happening, one wager, one amount, one win or loss. Straight bet, very straightforward. You can remember it that way. But what we'll have is another kind of bet is a parlay. Some might pronounce it parlay. Some might pronounce it parlay. Uh, and, and you'll also see, you'll hear of things like same game parlays or what have you. What a parlay is, is just combining multiple events into one bet and that if multiple events happen the way you predict they will, then you'll get a increased payout. And that payout is the amount you get back based on the odds of that particular wager. You'll get an increased payout if all of those events happen. Now, if all but one of the events happen, you get nothing <laughs> under most circumstances. Some some books will will ensure the parlays or do some other exotic things. Don't worry about that right now. But for most straight parlays, you're taking on the risk of not being right on all of those, but you're going to get a much bigger payout in the end if you are. So what ends up happening is that you, you know, when you're betting parlays, and especially when you're betting, you know, four or five team parlays, you're really hoping you're right on a bunch of different decisions. And most of the time you probably won't be. So you're going to lose a little, a lot of times, and then occasionally you're going to get this nice big payout. And that's what a parlay does. And that's why they're so uh, popular. Same game parlays are basically what they sound like. We have one game where we're going to make multiple wagers, all connected, and if all of these things happen, then we're going to win our bet, which will have a higher payout based on the odds that the parlay happens. Because when you start combining these things, um, you know it, you just get one wrong and the whole thing goes away, and so they're able to offer more on um, uh, more on the payouts than they would otherwise. Okay, so now we're going to get to teasers. Teasers are where you have multiple bets, just like a parlay, but they are set up in such a way where the points or the spread amounts tied to those bets, when you combine them, get moved, and then you end up with odds that are very similar to having one event, but you have much more favorable terms on both of those sides. So a side would be one of the entries, one of the bets inside of that parlay or inside of that teaser. So if you're, oh, we have multiple sides, that's what you're talking about there. And so the most common teaser that you'll hear about is like a Wong teaser in football, where you you swing the points on two events through some key numbers. Those key numbers are just the amounts of points in that spread bet. And so it allows you to, by bringing two teams together, two 
two legs or two legs in that teaser, that's those are two bets in that teaser, then you have an opportunity to have a more likely outcome for each of those, but your collection of those in the teaser is um it, it, it's more likely to happen, but you're going to get paid. And this is important when you when you're like, I think this team is going to win, but they're currently favored by seven, and I don't know if they're going to be favored, uh, or I don't know if they're going to win by that much. I just think they're going to win the game. So if you can combine that with somebody else who's favored by seven, then you could have both of them to win more like a money line. And then if both of those things happen, it's a teaser. Anyway, we're starting to get a little too complicated with the explanation. Just understand what teasers. The key thing here, and you can always research additional. This is not a thing you do immediately, but you're going to hear about these. And so I wanted to include this in this. But a teaser is where you combine multiple bets like a parlay, but you've you've swung the points involved in such a way that the overall teaser bet gets paid out more like a single bet or a standalone bet versus being paid out like a parlay. But because each side has an adjustment, it's more likely to occur. I wanted to throw in another term here that it can mean a couple different things. And this is where I think it's important to understand the context in which you're hearing this term. So live bet can mean, first off, this is a bet that I've placed during the game. So the game is occurring and, you know, maybe it's halftime or maybe it's, it's you know, a commercial break. And I think the next play in a football game is going to be a running play. I can place that live bet and see what the next play is. I could win or lose. So you can do this very quickly. You can also say... A bet that hasn't lost yet is a live bet. And so understand the context is that, oh, yeah, I'm still live on that action means my bet hasn't yet lost. Okay, so recognize the context of it because it can get very confusing depending on who you're talking to or what the the context is of of what you're talking about. If you say, hey, I want to go do some live betting, probably means you're going to bet during the game. If you're saying, hey, that, that bet I have on the Cowboys is still live. I'm going to wait until the end of this game before I go meet you elsewhere. You know, so that's that's what that term means. And it can be confusing because it's the same words that can mean a couple different things. A couple other terms that are going to get thrown around a lot as you encounter more sports book uh, content and sports betting content. Square simply means a not smart better, a better that doesn't really understand how to make a profit. They may be just doing this for fun, or they may be just doing this to cheer on their team. The public is often referred to as square. It just means not very smart about how they're betting. They're kind of doing it for entertainment or they're they're misguided in their judgment. It's really a fairly derogative term. <laughs> like if you call somebody a square in normal life, it's probably not interpreted as a uh, complete compliment anyway. Uh, in betting, it's especially not. So if, if it's a square play, that means a not not smart play. The word I kept trying to say throughout all of this was sharp, and that is the opposite of square. The sharp means it is a smart better. It is a uh, a... a play that has an advantage or play that has a likelihood of being profitable. You'll also hear of people called sharps. You'll also hear them called wise guys or handicappers or pros. And there's a lot of other similar lingo out there. It's basically people who seem to know more than you (laughs) is kind of how they, they, what are the sharp betters? Uh, I, in, in the work that I do with Odds Jam and the betting that I do, I'm now considered a sharp better by the sports book. So the sports books, if they say, oh, that's a sharp better, they may take actions like limiting how much that bet the better can make or how much they can bet on various games or various markets, right? So we've talked about markets. We've talked about the games. We've talked about the bets. A sharp better may be able to do some things in in their analysis that allows them to have a mathematical advantage over time, and that will help them make money in the long run. But sharp betters and sharp books, you know, have to to do that. And so what I just mentioned is a sharp book. Sharp sports books are sports books who set lines or their prices or their odds in ways that are most reflective of truth. So sharp in that context, in the sports book context, means that book predicts the future better than other books. And so what a sports book, because a sports book is its own little world of setting prices, some books do it better than others. And when some books that are less sharp or a square book is 
setting prices, there may be an opportunity for a sharp better to go to that square book or, or less sharp book and find opportunities to make wagers that are advantageous for the better. And so this this kind of underlying concept is important because if you're going to be sports betting, why not wait, make some money doing it versus just have entertainment? Because you know what's more entertaining than losing money gambling on sports? Winning money at gambling on sports. So be a sharp better, learn to be a sharp better, and you can make money and have more fun gambling on sports. So just recognize some betters are smarter, sharper than others. Some books are sharper than others. And so that's an important underlying thing to understand. Now, the last main term that we're going to cover in this particular video is tout. So what a tout is, is a person who claims to be a sharp better, whether they are or not, and they are trying to get you to follow them or tail their picks. So a tout is someone who says, hey, I know which picks are going to win. I know which picks are most likely to get you profits. And by building themselves up and building their knowledge up about how you should tail their picks, they are trying to build up their reputation and they're trying to get money as a sports picker or what have you. And I would just urge caution on that because you're dealing with the same information and you're going to have an opportunity to make the same bets as them. And there's already people on both sides of any bet. So a person who's out there touting their knowledge as being something unique, what you'll learn is as we have some other videos on things like the efficient market hypothesis, and we understand how sports betting compares to financial uh, investments and financial markets, I think you'll understand where touts really are not necessarily something you're going to want to follow, even though there may be times where a person makes a pick that you may want to tail. And so it's understanding that you want to be thoughtful before you just go and say, okay, tell me what to pick. Their interests may be divergent from your own. And so be aware of that. It's just an area where in sports betting, you know, there's still a connotation. There's still a history there where it was a little bit sleazy and, and you had bookies and you have these shady characters are attracted to this space. And quite, you know, the, the, the reasonable thing is, is like, just understand we're evolving now. We're trying to mature the space. And one of the reasons that I'm creating this content is that I want to help everyone understand all the ins and outs of this and realize this isn't inherently a shady activity. This can be a lot of fun. This can be a really uh, enjoyable thing to do if you enjoy sports and you want to enjoy sports even more and, and hopefully make some money uh, doing that. It, it can be a great hobby. You know, how many hobbies do you have that, that you can legitimately make? Uh, a good amount of money doing. And so my goal in all of this is to help you do that versus going down these bad paths with touts or others that are trying to get money from you. Instead, let's let's all work together and, and make money together. So from here, we're going to have a lot more videos and I'm going to turn off my, my little selfie cam so you can see this. What you should do next. So if you've gone through this video and you're like, oh, I see, I understand some of these terms now a little bit better than we, what we had. These, this is the first of what will be many of these videos that help you understand the basics in, in a way that hopefully resonates. Please like and subscribe to this channel. I'll have a lot more content coming out. Check out my daily live stream and other videos. So if you want to see how I actually bet in my own life and with an edge, creating positive EV, making money and, and being completely transparent about it, I will show you myself making the bets and I will show you the results and I will help you do it yourself. And so do that. Follow me on Twitter, uh, A Train Bets, and uh, go to A Train Bets Oddsjam.com forward slash betting dash education to see Odds Jam's many educational videos. So, Odds Jam has a tremendous amount of helpful videos that you can go and look at and understand various different topics. I'll come out with my own as well, but for now, go over there and, and poke around. They also have a YouTube channel that's great, but I think. If you're in this place and wanting to learn more, there are so many things out there that can help you, but just be careful because like the touts, like, you know, the, the history of sports betting and the bookies and all of that, there's plenty of folks out there that are not thinking about this and how they are going to help you, but they're thinking about this and saying, how can we get your dollars? And, and for me, I just, I don't like that side of the business. So anyway, please check it out. And once again, I'm, I'm really excited to be here producing content, helping folks learn these things. 
comment, like, subscribe, help me understand what are the things that you want to learn more about. And I will address it in my live streams or I'll address it in, in separate videos. And we'll hopefully have a lot of good things to talk about uh, in the future. I'll try to make future videos a bit shorter so you can just kind of watch them as it comes. But this, I think, was important to kind of just level set. A lot of terminology out there. It can be intimidating for somebody, but it can be understood. It is not magic. It is. It doesn't need to be mysterious. You can learn it just like a casino game or just like investing. There's a, there's reasons behind the terminology and, and how we operate. So with that, thank you so much for watching this video and please like subscribe and we'll see you on the other side. Thanks,